Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Saints have been at it. They're in week two of training camp. Our friend Matty Hudak is going to be handling our camp reports uh, moving forward throughout the remainder of Saints camp. And uh, we lead the show with her today. Maddie, we appreciate it. How are you? I'm good. Uh, my internal body temperature is just winding down from today's practice. <laughs> how, how long were you out there? Well, I do Tulane in the morning. So from about 7.30 to noon, I was in the Louisiana blanket of heat. <laughs> uh, a little different than the Bay Area where you were for the past couple of weeks, I would imagine. Most definitely. And my tolerance is back to about a zero on that. So I will be <laughs> ramping up with the players. Hey, I think um, maybe one of the biggest storylines today seemed to be that that uh, Taysom Hill was back at practice. Uh, we know he had uh, got, took a shot in the ribs, missed a little bit. Uh, what can you update us on with uh, with Taysom? Yeah, so that was kind of the first time people had seen him. He was out there in just general workout clothes. He was, looked like he was working on you know some cuts and footwork drills with possibly you know one of the tight end trainers and and kind of going through reps verbally and and talking about those cuts. He was out there for about 20 minutes or so and then went in and changed. But he, you know, looked strong. He wasn't necessarily hitting anyone with his ribs, but his footwork looked sharp. Um, who did Trevor Penning beat up today? <laughs> uh, he actually, there were a couple of plays where the linebacking blitz kind of got the best of him. Okay. Uh, he did allow kind of two back to back plays by Caden Ellis and Pete Werner, who was blitzing quite a bit today on his inside shoulder, but. At one point, he did shove Pete Warner to the ground. I'm pretty sure the same thing with Peyton Turner. He, he's just a big presence there. But it did seem like it was, you know, I haven't seen the scuffles from the last couple of days, if you will. But it did definitely seem to be more reined in today. You know, it's interesting, Maddie, because we have focused so much on just sort of the, the mentality, right? The finishing blocks and all that stuff. We haven't talked tremendously about, like, how, how he's actually performing against... NFL defenders. So can you elaborate a little on, I mean, small sample, I get it, but just on what you were able to observe today? Yeah, I mean, he just looks dominant and you put it well, you know, he took a lot more first team reps today. Okay. Uh, and Peyton Turner is a big guy just as much as Trevor Penning is a big guy. And we kind of saw Peyton Turner maul that side of the field kind of in training camp last year. He really stood out. So the fact that he's able to kind of rein in, you know, what is a formidable pass rush when healthy with the Saints. Uh, you know, he's definitely gone toe-to-toe thus far. It's not as if he sticks out or anything like that. It looks like his bend is pretty good. I know they're kind of working on his technique, but it is kind of hard to instill that drive and physicality mentality in a player. And to me, it's easier to teach the technique after the fact than it is to teach a mentality that isn't really there. And so the fact that he is, you know, playing through the whistle, it, it could be a little problematic at times, but you're right in that he is really going to toe with, to toe with NFL starting linemen pretty well. Uh, I mean, you'd much rather have to say, hey, big guy, like, rein it in instead of, hey, let's go light a fire under this guy. <laughs> I mean, uh, absolutely. Uh, Matty Hudak is right. with us, Saints training camp report. Uh, one more on the offensive side, then I want to flip to the defense. Um, the Saints, and I'm sorry I didn't prep you on this, but the Saints added tight end Chris Herndon was do you do you know if he was even out there practicing today? Uh, any observations there? Yeah, he was. Um, I unfortunately didn't catch much of him because Jawan Johnson kind of had a standout day okay. at tight end. He really drew quite a bit of attention. So I know Chris Herndon was out there, but him and, and Trotman did kind of stick out today in reps. And both, you know, Dennis Allen mentioned both of them in his uh, post camp remarks about them both having really strong days today. But Juwan Johnson, you know, he looks kind of like a half tight end, half wide receiver, but he definitely looks more the part this year. Uh, and I think having that year of transition under his belt, uh, it's kind of a position group that is a huge question mark just because, you know, Adam Trotman, I didn't think he did as bad as other people might have said last year. Granted, what his responsibilities were probably – you know, envisioned to be coming out of Dayton uh, the year prior and effectively turning into one of the top looks on the offense. But adding in the fact that Taysom Hill is going to add to that group, uh, it, it, they certainly did look like a stronger unit today. Um, you mentioned Dennis Allen praised the, those two tight ends. Anything else of interest from Dennis Allen today in his comments? Uh, 
Um, I, I think just for lack of a better term, not so much his comments, but to me what stuck out was this sense of normalcy really continued on. You know, last year was my first training camp. It was the Saints first without Drew Brees. You couldn't kind of tell, but the fact that, you know, they've moved on, they've, they've gone forward with Winston, they have Dennis Allen in the building, uh, everything really does seem just kind of like it's getting back to his parameters. I would say the only thing that stuck out would be, you know, his comments about C.J. Gardner-Johnson mm. and not so much about, you know, his contract situation, but more about what that's kind of allowed that group to do. Well, let's go there next then, because I did want to go to the secondary. She's on Twitter, by the way, at Maddie Hudak underscore 94. Give her a follow. Um, I, I am going to ask you, though, about the contract situation because there's – it's not re- – he's not holding out, right? But he's mm-hmm. limiting what he's doing. What What can you elaborate on there with what – what Chauncey's doing. Yeah, so he's present. He goes through the warm-up drills. You know, they, they started inside and then moved outside. He went through the stretches with them. And then he kind of just takes his helmet off and hangs out with his position group. You know, he's out there. He's certainly, you know, his usual energy is, is there and just kind of standing there being encouraging but not really participating in any, you know, one-on-one or seven-on-seven drills at this point. Um, I, I look, I don't imagine Maddie that it, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but with a guy that's as proven as he is, I don't know that he's missing much, but is there any progress or do you expect any progress on a contract with, uh, with Chauncey Garner Johnson before the season? Yeah. So the, the Saints have, you know, been kind of known to award those, you know, kind of players that are looking for a, you know, deserved extension. Uh, you look at the past couple of seasons, uh, Ryan Ramchick and Michael Thomas, they extended their contracts in July. And then the season before last, it was Alvin Kamara and Jamario Davis. And then it was Marshawn Lattimore, uh, you know, mid August last year. So I don't think it's, you know, it's something that they've shown willingness to kind of work on. And, you know, Bradley Roby kind of talked about, you know, the evolution of, of slot corner and, and just, you know, going from kind of Chris Harris to what it is now. It, it's not so much just, you know, the, the least good defensive back on your team. It really is a specific skill set. The thing I would say is a benefit, and this is kind of what I was alluding to with Dennis Allen's comments, is he said it has given, you know, other guys a chance to kind of prove themselves, and that really every year, every player has to kind of reprove themselves in a way. But you saw Lante Taylor getting some action in the squad, Bradley Roby quite a bit, and even Paulson Adebo in some disguised looks throughout the day. So uh, certainly not the worst thing at this point. You brought up that C.J. Gardner-Johnson's a pretty well-established veteran. I don't think him working back into the lineup will be as you know much of a transition for him, but I am at this point agreeing with Allen that it really has given those really talented defensive backs in that room kind of more of a chance to shine and see where they could fit in this very versatile secondary at this point. Uh, you mentioned Adebo. Uh, he has been, by yeah. everyone's account, uh, the standout so far. What were your observations? Uh, yeah, he, he stands out immediately in his stature. He just is a very big defensive back and it shows in his ability to play physical. But I remember last year at training camp, seeing him kind of going off to the side on his own and and going over some footwork. And I had spoken with his trainer that worked with him, you know, throughout high school and college and, and into getting drafted. And that was really what they honed in on with footwork and how that first full step can make a difference. And, you know, Lave has kind of come on as this guy running really sharp, slant routes and, you know, Adebo's change of direction, his ability to anticipate, uh, you know, his acceleration and ability to remain in phase and, and play through the play. He had a really good pass breakup against Olave where Olave did catch it in the end zone, but he played through it and it just shows really good fight. He, uh, you know, Bradley Roby mentioned how much he really wants to learn, how much of a good listener it, he is, and how humble he is. And you can really see that, you know, he, he does his play, kind of reminds me almost of Patrick. Patrick Willis, where he would just go on to the next play and not really, you know, celebrate much about it. But he just seems like he has the cerebral abilities, and then the physical is just really hard to ignore. So he, you know, I was still getting acclimated with who's in what position group, what's going on here, and every two seconds my attention was pulled over to Paulson Adebo making a great play. He played a little bit at safety at some point today. It just seems like he's made a really astonishing leap considering him coming from being a third-round draft pick out of the Pac-12 last year that didn't play in 2020. The Stanford kid has a cerebral on the field. Stunning to find that <laughs> happen. Uh, but when you match that with the physical ability, there's no denying it. Uh, Matty Hudak doing the honors here, giving us a Saints camp report. Matty, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Sounds good. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.